As I'm sure you're all well aware, there's been a lot of discussion so far this year about our new Dunlop Super Soft Tyre. You're going to continue to hear a lot about the tyre, the word camber and tyre pressures because we're halfway through the championship season. Teams are learning an enormous amount about these tyres to this very day. And it all started way back at the beginning of the year at CalSpam with rig testing in the eastern USA, capturing data to understand the nuances of the change to these tyres. So to begin with, here in the Hino Hub, I want to jump into some jargon busting. What on earth is camber? So let's have a look here. And we've got some graphics to support it, thanks to Holden and Freightliner Racing. So first of all, camber is a measurement relative to a vertical plane. So it sounds all complex, a straight up and down line. And camber, in terms of the wheel and the tyre angle, is measured in degrees either positive or negative. Now, you'll never see a race car out there with positive camber. You will see a race car out there with negative camber. And not only is it measured in terms of degrees, it's also measured in terms of 0.1 increments. So 7.1, 7.2, 7.3. They measure it in a finite manner because it really does matter. So the reason they have camber is because this tyre is very sensitive to it. It's responding to it and it's also very sensitive to tyre pressure. So that's what it is. Why on earth do you have it? So we have to understand a little bit more once again. So first and foremost, the way in which camber works is to compensate for the fact that the tyre is distorted under load. So stop and think about what happens to the tyre. Some amazing vision captured yesterday under the Freightliner car of Tim Slade. On the run to turn two, 250 kilometres an hour, it got a turn right, 70 kilometres an hour. Check out the distortion. A tonne and a half of supercar trying to rip this tyre face across the road. So there's a huge physics problem involved. And remember, the tread surface of the tyre is only 300 mil or 12 inches in the old language and so the tyre distortion is a big thing so the reason that you want to have camber is basically as a precautionary measure to offset this tyre distortion. When the tyre distorts it tries to pull the tread face off the road and you want every millimetre of that 300 millimetre tread face to be on the road and remember only two of the four tyres are doing the steering job. You remember, four tyres, they do different things. The fronts have got to turn the car, ride the bumps and brake. But the rear tyres, well, they're rotating, looking for drive traction, ride the bumps, and obviously there's braking involved as well. So one of the reasons why it's important, and here's a little cutaway section, the sidewall of this tyre has changed enormously in 2017. It's very, very flexible and very, very soft. So let's have a look at the rear by comparison, for example, because the demand is different. You don't need the same level of camber because it does a different job. So here you go. Now we're looking at the rear of Tim Slade's car and you can visibly see that the rear wheel is standing up straight. Contact patch with the road is very different because the demand is very different. It's basically got a single important job of drive traction, but it's also got to ride the bumps and you've got to be able to brake with it as well. So therefore, because it isn't being distorted, less camber. And a typical rear camber would be in the order of two and a half, three, three and a half, maybe four degrees. And these numbers vary from team to team along these garages. Now, the thing is, we know the tyre loves camber, but as it is in all forms of life, there is no such thing as a free lunch. If you continue to wind on camber, what happens is, first of all, on the front, by angling the front wheels, you're taking contact patch off the road, which hurts your braking performance. You can't have that. That's no good. The other problem is, and I want to show you this here, look for this little black line, the tyre banding. That black line is heat energy building, and so the inside edge of the tyre begins to overheat. That's the run down to turn two. So when you go to a place like Bathurst or Phillip Island, huge, huge friction. Temperature builds. The inside edge of the tyre can get very easily hurt. That's something that you don't want. So the reason why you've got to manage this is because on the high speed circuits, this can become a problem. And that was the drama that we had earlier in the year. So the camber story is one that's very, very interesting. It's got to be managed. They measure it statically, but you can also design your front suspension to have more dynamic camber. So as steering lock is applied, you get more in the middle of the turn. That's a whole nother story. But this weekend and throughout the year, teams are managing camber and tyre pressure very, very carefully. It's a huge part of the story of how your favourite driver and team are performing this year.